welcome and good morning. We bow before the Lord today, before the one who is our righteousness and our strength. He is the one to whom we have turned and by whom we have been saved. With Simeon, we have a peace that we need even to face death as he was. And yet that peace is so great that we can continue to live in it as well. Today we give thanks. Thanks to the Lord with our hearts and voices, joining with the psalmist, with Isaiah, with Paul, with Simeon, and all of God's people for that peace-filled life that is ours in Christ Jesus. With those thoughts, we begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. He has caused His wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provided redemption for His people. Holy and awesome is His name. To Him belongs eternal praise. We confess. In Psalm 111, the psalmist says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and that all who follow his precepts have good understanding. The truth is, however, that we have not followed, faithfully followed the Lord's direction, his laws, and his will. We confess our sins and failures to live a wise life, 
for the Lord himself has invited us to turn to him and be saved. O Lord, I am in need of your salvation. You deserve to be feared, held in awe, and respected. Yet I have ignored your will and your wisdom, and have chosen for myself what path I should follow. Forgive my many sins, save me, for you are God, and there is no other. Isaiah declares that in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. Jesus, the Christ child, is the one who lived a completely right and holy life. That qualified him to be our Savior. By his death on the cross, he has bought, back, bought you back from sin and Satan. In Christ, you are found to be right with God. Yes, in Christ, the Lord is gracious and compassionate to you. In him, you are forgiven. In him, you have peace. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear God's word appointed for this day. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nation shall rise to see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. So far, our Old Testament reading for this day. Our epistle is found in the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent his, the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. So far, our epistle reading. The Holy Gospel is found in the second chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens a womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. 
so that thoughts from my heart may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to him of all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord was upon him. So far, our gospel reading for the day. We confess our faith to one another and to the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for having sent redemption to your people. We praise you for keeping your covenant established with our forefathers and proclaimed by your prophets. We give thanks to you with our whole heart and praise you for sending us salvation in the babe of Bethlehem. In spirit, we kneel before his manger throne, for in it you have revealed your honor and majesty. We confess, O Lord, that our thankfulness for your great salvation leaves much to be desired. We have knelt at the manger, yet we have failed to let his word dwell in us richly. Compassion, kindness, lowliness, meekness, and patience have not always been a part of our spirit. We have experienced the joy of your forgiveness, but have often failed to forgive others. Peace of Christ does not always rule our hearts, and we have not done everything in his name. We often treat those within our family without demonstration of his love. For failing to show adequate Christian concern, O Lord, forgive us. Increase our faith by your Spirit that our Lord Jesus Christ may be for us a, a stepping stone rather than a rock of offense. Grant us strength and courage to acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior. On this day, we bring before you all the names of those who we love in our hearts. We ask you to watch over them, to provide according to their need, the ones we name in our hearts. We ask, Lord, in your mercy to hear our prayer, to take care of those according to their physical, mental, spiritual needs. Lord, we also ask that you would bless our witness that it may bring others to the light of their salvation. This we ask in the name of and for the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Time for our children's message. It's great to see all of you here. I'm sure that all of you had a wonderful Christmas, didn't you? I sure had a lot of fun celebrating Jesus' birthday. And I'm sure, like me, 
you got a lot of presents for Christmas too. We could sit here and talk about all the wonderful things we got for for Christmas, talking about all the special things we got, really neat presents. And I'll bet you could even say that some of those pr presents were extra special. Okay, so Mary and Joseph had their baby. Now, every mom and dad thinks their baby is special, and I'll bet your parents thought you were very special when you were born, and they were right. Mary and Joseph felt the same way about their son. They knew that Mary's little boy was a special gift from God and that he was a part of God's plan. In our gospel reading today, we heard about a day when Mary and Joseph were at the temple with their baby boy. There was a man who came up to them who they didn't know, and he began to talk to them. Now, that we might think that's kind of strange, isn't it? Maybe even frightening if a stranger comes up and starts talking to you. And this stranger said some very strange things, some even frightening things. He told them their baby wasn't just special, but this baby was extra special. Now, we know who this baby was, don't we? This baby of Mary and Joseph was Jesus. And why was Jesus extra special? That's right. We remember he wasn't just a baby, but he was the Son of God. And what was he going to do for us when he grew up? Of course. We remember how that little baby was going to grow up and one day die on a cross for us. Because of that little baby, everyone in the whole world is invited to be a part of God's family. And that stranger turned out to be Simeon. He was a good friend. And Simeon was right. This baby was not just special, but was extra special. And I know something else about that extra special baby who was our extra special Savior. He was born, he died, and he rose from the dead so that we could be extra special. God made you carefully to be who you are, and he thought that you were so special that he sent Jesus into that stable in Bethlehem to be born there for you. And he washed you when you were baptized to make you his extra special child forever. Will you pray with me? Hold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you for making me special. We pray that you would help us to tell other people around us, those who do not yet know how special they are, and that they are special because of what Jesus did for them. In his name we pray. Amen. And now we continue with our worship. God loves me dearly, grants me salvation. God loves me dearly, loves even me. Therefore I say again, God loves me dearly. God loves me dearly, loves even me. I was in slavery, sin, death, and darkness. God's love was working to make me free. Therefore I say again, God loves me dearly. God loves me dearly, loves even me. forth Jesus, my dear Redeemer. He sent forth Jesus and set me free. Therefore, 
sure I'll say again God loves me dearly God loves me dearly Loves even me Jesus my Savior Himself did offer Jesus my Savior Paid all I owed Therefore I'll say again God loves me dearly God loves me dearly Loves even me Now I will praise you O love eternal Now I will praise you All my life long Therefore I'll say again God loves me God loves me dearly, God loves me dearly, loves even me. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation today is from our Gospel reading in Luke chapter 2. Let us pray. Lord our God, we know that we must hold you in respect and awe, and yet we sometimes fail to do that. And so we pray that you would enable the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord our God. Amen. And now in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. There are certain things that we like to be predictable. If anything, this year has really shown us that, right? We want water to come out of the faucet when we turn on the tap. We want the lights to come on whenever we flip the switch. We want the car engine to start when we turn on the ignition switch or when we push the button in some cases. Even in this crazy age and time of 2020 and COVID-19, we really do wish for what was boringly conventional. That's what we used to say about it. For example, we would like paychecks to be on time. We don't want unexpected expenses. No, there are just certain things we really wish they could go back to the way they were. They were just fine the way they were, even if we complained about them at that time. And maybe that's what makes Christmas such a lovely event for so many people. Maybe part of What makes our celebration of Christmas just so meaningful is that it is so easy to find Jesus on that holy day. We expect for Him to be lying there in the stable, lying in the manger. And Christmas never disappoints. We can always find our Savior away in the manger, in a lowly cradle, on Mary's lap, sleeping with oxen nearby. It's comforting to know that Jesus is just right there for us. We want that baby Jesus in the manger where he can look all cute and remain helpless. Not much of a challenge to us. In short, with Jesus in the manger, in the manger, we can have our cake and eat it too. We can have this predictable, cute little Savior, one who won't push us just too hard. So let's consider God's movement for just a bit. You see, God didn't permit the gospel writers to dwell on that manger scene very long at all. Among the four gospel writers, relatively little time is devoted to the stable in the manger. As important as it was announced by the angels as it was accompanied by wondrous signs as it was, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John invest a small amount of ink on this topic. Matthew devotes one verse that speaks about Jesus' birth. The rest of the verses 
in, in Matthew relate to the Annunciation and to the visit of the Magi. Luke devotes 20 verses. Mark and John, they don't even speak of the Savior's birth directly. So you see, even in the Scriptures, they don't permit the Savior to remain in the stable very long. In fact, our Gospel reading today starts out with Jesus at the ripe old age of eight days old. So, from His birth to just a short time after, His mom and dad are already taking Him to the temple. And there they have the encounter with the aged servants of the living God. We look at the one especially, a servant of the living God, a temple priest named Simeon. Now maybe you can glance at that in your gospel reading from Luke 2. Simeon was a pretty ordinary servant of God. In fact, we probably would have never heard of Simeon except for this encounter with the Christ child. The baby in the manger that we've contemplated for these last a uh, few weeks, was seen by Simeon as an altogether different person. He wasn't just cute and adorable. This baby that Simeon so longed to see and held in his arms is described by Simeon as the reason that many people in Israel will be condemned and many others will be saved. He will be a sign that will expose the thoughts of those who reject him. To Mary... Simeon said that on account of Jesus, a sword will pierce your heart. Now, we don't get this at the manger. These are words that speak of tumultuous change, of a Jesus who came to change the world. He came to challenge us. He came to change lives engrossed in sin. He came to permeate with God's aroma those souls that were permeated with the world's stench. That, beloved, sure doesn't sound like a baby whom we meet in a manger. Simeon knew what this little child that he held in his arms had been called to do. In fact, we read, and many of us are familiar with Simeon's song, we hear those words again. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Simeon's quest to see and to hold that baby Jesus, had been fulfilled. He had gotten to see, he had been privileged to hold in his arms the salvation of God for all humanity. It brought joy to this old man. It brought peace to him. It brought hope. His eyes were able to see into heaven because they had seen Jesus. And his quest had been fulfilled and ended. We need to be on a quest like that to see Jesus and to find Him. But there are those who do not look for Jesus. There are those who have no room, no time for a Savior. But that's absolutely crazy. Not seeking God is destructive. It's like a person refusing to breathe. It results only in death. Not seeking God is contrary to that very image that we were created to bear, His image. And to think that we do not need God is the height of all arrogance. The psalmist says in Psalm 10, verse 4, In his pride the wicked does not seek Him. In all his thoughts there is no room for God. Connecting with Jesus is a vital quest of all humanity. Now, many of us don't know this. We spend a lot of time searching for something, something of which we're not quite sure. We know that something seems to be lacking. Something's just a little bit off. We just feel a little longingness, a longingness, a, a longing inside. 
There's an emptiness within us that just won't go away. That in spite of all the shiny gifts we surround ourselves with, new homes, new vehicles, nothing, nothing seems to make that emptiness go away. And my dear friends, nothing will help that we can bring. You see, that longing is something that can only be satisfied by something outside of us, and that is by God. The Bible tells us we're created in God's image. We have this need to commune, to fellowship with God, to find rest with Him. Psalm 63 says, O God, You are my God, earnestly I seek You. My soul thirsts for You, my body longs for You. Does that sound like we need an encounter with God? You see, until that encounter happens, nothing is going to satisfy. Not riches, not prestige, not power, not possession. It was St. Augustine, one of the great thinkers of the church, who said that we, humanity, cannot find rest until we find our rest in God. Now, if you don't know what's missing in your life, if you've still been looking for something, let me point you to what it is. Let me point you to that cross. The need to fulfill, or to fill rather, a God-shaped hole in our very soul. Do you think that God knows about this need that we have? Do you suppose that Christmas might be how God gives our quest a face? A name, Jesus Christ? Do you think maybe God gave us Christmas in order to give us a place to be found? The answer, of course, is yes. So, now the question becomes, where do we find Jesus after Christmas? Where do we look for Jesus after the angel choirs have stopped singing, after they've gone back to heaven? Where do we find him when the shepherds have returned to their fields? When the, the holy child of Bethlehem has vacated the stable and the manger, where do we look for him? There we point to the cross. Where he was crucified, murdered, brutalized for our transgression pierced for our iniquities. Simeon told Mary that she would bear the pain of watching Jesus die. A sword would pierce her heart. And indeed, I'm sure that happened as she stood before the cross, watching Jesus finish the work the Father had sent Him to do. That is why Jesus came. To die in our place to purchase our forgiveness, to bear our punishment. But that story didn't end there on the cross, did it? did it? He rose on the third day, and there we see that He was more than just a helpless infant. In His resurrection, we find the rest of Jesus' persona. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Boy, that's quite a change from the little baby in a manger, isn't it? An eight-year-old being held by Simeon in a temple. And my friends, Christ can still be found here in His temple among us. You can meet that very Christ that once lay in the manger. The one Simeon held in His arms right here. We find Him in the Word. We find Christ in the forgiveness that we receive. We find Christ in the Holy Sacraments, in baptism, in the Lord's Supper. He comes to us through these means of grace. That Jesus, the one born in the manger, comes to us. He comes to our hearts. He comes to fill that God-shaped hole in our souls. For months, we've been looking forward to Christmas. It's now come, and it's gone. Or has it? Maybe. If we're talking about the lights and the tinsel, but if we're talking about meeting up with our Savior, then Christmas is much more than just a single day of the year. You see, Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel. 
He is the incarnate Son, present with us forever until the end of time. He is here, and as He has promised, that wherever two or three are gathered in His name, there He is among us. He is here where His word of forgiveness and life is spoken. He is here for all who are searching. He is here in our hearts. And so we too can say, as did Simeon, Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Amen. And now may this peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ. Amen. Hear now God's word of sending and blessing. Depart now in peace, for your eyes have seen the salvation which God has prepared for all people. Grow in strength and wisdom, and bring forth a harvest of righteousness and praise. And may God smile upon you and make you strong and wise. May Christ Jesus share his inheritance with you freely, and may the Holy Spirit open your eyes to the presence of God's Messiah. Amen. We are so glad that you've joined us here for our online worship today. We invite you to join us again here online next week or to join us in person as we worship together, practicing safe social distancing. We gather at nine o'clock for Sunday school and adult Bible class. And then our worship begins at 1015. If you have enjoyed your time with us, let us know. But more importantly, let someone else know about the wonderful 
worship experience you've had. If this happens to be your first time to worship with us, we uh, especially would like for you to like us on Facebook, to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can always find out more about us by going to our website at trinitylutheran.cc. And there you can learn more about the great people here at Trinity. Of course, we'd be more than happy to have you join us in person here at Trinity Lutheran Church, 1512 Louise Street at Avenue Inn in Rosenberg, Texas, where we seek to be a people praising God, maturing in Christ, and reaching others through the Holy Spirit.